Hey, this is Tim with Game Time. I'm going to try to show you how to play uh, Arborea, Arborea. I'm not sure quite how you say it, but it is right here all set up, and this is it in its glory. Um, I am going to show you how to play the Midnight River expansion uh, and the Winds of uh, Change cards here. I have two of them out there. And we're also going to show you how to, well, it's not really much to show, but it's the Sage Overlay Tiles, which are, these are this one and this one are Kickstarter exclusives. And I think part of the Midnight River expansion is as well. Okay, so this is kind of a game where you're trying to rebuild, I don't know, the forest back and trying to get creatures to come and live in your ecosystem that you're trying to rebuild uh, using these cards here, uh, which I believe are called Habitat cards. It's worker placement, but it's not quite like you're thinking. So let me show you the player board real quick. Let's start out with this. You've got different types of workers. You have elders and you have the, the little villagers here, the young ones. And then you have the veterans here, which are the white and they're little as well. I don't know why they didn't differentiate them as much, but these two are the same size. And the, the one with the white is the veteran. Okay, you start the game with two elders and one of the uh, younger ones. Uh, and then these are gifts you can give right here, showing the bag. Uh, you can also get, um, during the um, uh, game, you're going to be able to get these cards right here. Uh, and the cards are called ecosystem cards, okay? And you're trying to build one giant ecosystem, one giant, I guess, habitat. Um, so you, there's a lot going on, but the game is actually not as complicated as it seems. Um, so you can hold three of these ecosystem cards right here. You start out with a random one, and you can kind of place it any way you want to. Okay, let's go over to the board. So what you're doing uh, on your turn, there's four things that you can do, and they're all shown right here, okay? If you understand this, this is only a part of the game, but this part is easy. It's kind of the other pieces in the game that are maybe a little complicated. Um, so the very first thing you can do on your turn is you're going to be able to move one of these tracks, okay? And there are four pilgrimage uh, tracks on the board. And uh, this one lets you move one of the pilgrimage tracks. And when you move any of them, you're always going to move it to the right or to the left uh, if it's on the right. So you're moving them towards the center. I'm sorry about that. Um, so that's one of the things you can do in the first phase. The other thing you can do is you can take one of your guys, one of your available guys. The available guys are on the bottom of your board here. Okay, these ones are in the supply where you can't use them. These ones are where you can use them down here. So I'm going to take one of my available guys here. Let's choose an elder. And I, I'm going to place him on one of these four tracks. Well, let's just place him here. So they're going to come. If I place him here, this is where he comes. Up here is the same spot. It's the fourth spot on here. Um, so that's where I can place them. Now, depending on which track I place them on, there's many different trails that I can go off on. There's many trails in the game. There's eight of them to be exact. There's four pilgrimage tracks and there's a north trail and a south trail in each one. And so if I were to place him here in the first uh, part of my turn, he doesn't, he doesn't move at all. Um, so I can either place him in one of these tracks so I can move later in the turn, or I could just straight up move the track, or I could do both, but I have to pay what's called spirit here. And at the beginning of the game, you start with a certain amount of spirit. The first player, you know, if it's me, I would start there at zero. And the second player would start here. So if I want to do both of these actions here um, in a two-player game, I would, you know, I could place him. And I could also move the track that he's on. But I have to pay two spirit in a two-player game. And in a three- to five-player game, I have to pay, you know, three spirit. So it just lets me do it one more time. Can't do it unlimited amounts of time. One thing I should talk about whenever you move the tracks, and this is kind of an important part of the game. So say I'm here, I did both these actions, I moved it. Every time I move it, and any number of guys that are already on here. So say I had if I had a guy here, and maybe Allie has one of her guys over here. As soon as it moves, these guys can jump off, okay? And when they jump off, they can either go here or here, so north or south. Okay, and the further, you know, depending on where they go, that's the kind of bonuses they're going to get. Uh, the further they go on their pilgrimage, they, they go on this track here, the more rewards they're going to be able to get. The, also, kind of different rewards they're going to be able to get, especially right here. Okay, and so what I can do in phase two of my turn is as long as I have guys that are out on any of these tracks, um, two of them, you know, without having to pay, I can go ahead and resolve two of them. So I could take this guy... 
I could go here, I could do this, do this, do this. And then I, if he's a big elder, if he's a big, you know, meeple here, an elder, I take him and I put him back in the supply where I can use him again, okay? And I would do the same thing here and I can choose how I resolve these. I could have resolved this one first instead of second. Get this, get this, get this. Same thing goes back here. Now, if he was one of the small guys, say I had put the small guy right here, okay? He does the same things, okay? There's two differences. One is that when he goes back, he's not gonna go back down here where I can use him again. He's gonna go up here to where he, I have to be able to gain him by getting that symbol in the game, recruit him again to be able to use him. Um, the other thing that the other, either whether it's a veteran or one of the young uh, villagers is uh, uh, when I go to this space right here, okay, there are some bonuses that I could use and I'm not gonna go into it just yet, but he, only the little ones, either this guy or this guy can use these type of bonuses. Each of the sages has them here, okay? Okay, so that's the second thing I can do on my turn. Um, let's take that off just so I don't get confused here. And you know, just a note real quick, we could have activated a third guy on the trail if there was one but we had to pay two spirit. And so, you know, when you lose spirit, you go down to, and when you gain spirit, you know, on a different turn, maybe I would go to the right. Let me just explain that real quick. And the spirit is just, you don't lose points. Every time you see this, this is points, and this is negative points, obviously, but you don't lose these instantly. It's at the end of the game that you lose them. Uh, the third thing you can do, and this one's pretty simple, and you're not gonna do it every turn, but if I have one of these ecosystem cards, Okay, and I can gain them whenever I get a certain symbol, and the symbol is actually right here. Okay, just for reference. So if I have one of these ecosystem cards during my third part of my turn right here, so I can complete an ecosystem card. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pay what's on the bottom, and I'm going to get what's on the top. Okay, I'm not going to go through the symbols just yet, so now I'm going to explain to you what's called biomes. So biomes are right down here. There's six of them, and whenever I gain a biome, if you look, there's a number right here, and they are victory points. You are going to gain these later in the turn, possibly. So if I gain this biome, two of it, I move the top part like so, okay, to note that I have two of it. Um, and if I were to gain, you know, this orange one in the same turn, I would move it however much I, I got during the turn. And what I can do, you know, say, say there's already some green out there. Maybe there's four green uh, up here on a previous turn. Um, during phase three of my turn, I can pay what's in here. I could go down, I could go down one, two, okay? And I can pay this cost, I get the bonus up here, and then I would take this card and put it here to be available for the last part of my turn. Okay, and this is a ecosystem card that I'm gonna be able to put over here in the habitat that I'm trying to form. And when I place it over here, I can place it on top of Pretty much any, any way, I just cannot cover up uh, completely. I can also place it next to, I cannot do diagonal, okay? But I can I can pretty much do anything I wanna do. I can go like that, I can go like, you know, like that. Anyway, a lot you can do with it. It's pretty liberal in how that works. Okay, so you would, phase three, if I complete, I can only complete one, one of these ecosystem cards. I'd put it here on the right, and then I would go down and be done with that part of my turn after I get the rewards. And I would go here. And I would do two things here. I uh, guess it's kind of good that I showed this. So I would um, increase the biomes or I would, I would do this part of the turn. Uh, and what this means right here, this symbol is I go over and if there's any biomes that I gained during my turn and did not spend, I can take the bottom half of the, uh, the biome and I raise it up one, two. And for each one that I go through for each victory points, okay, because I'm trying to go up back up to the top part. Okay, remember it's two, and okay, that tracks it, and this is just how you uh, get points. And so I would get three, six points for that, and I would do the same thing with orange, and I would get three more points, and then two points. So I'd get 11 total for that. And what this would mean is that I've gotten these resources, I have not spent them, and on the next person's turn, they can then spend them. The fourth thing I can do over here is for each guy I have on a track. So say I put, say I put this guy here. Okay, and I didn't move this track, say I put this guy here. Uh, well, I already had him here, but let's say he, then this track's moved right here. Um, maybe Allie's got one on here as well. So if that's the placement here, that's how it looks. What I would do 
uh, is at the end of my turn for each one of my guys that is, is dark here as, as the black outline. I'm going to move this once just for my guys. And then once I've moved it, you know, I can go anybody as before. Uh, whenever the track moves, we can always jump off. I can jump off. And then this person can jump off, and they probably want to because they're they're at pretty much the end of the, this. Uh, well, they're at the beginning of this trail here, uh, at the last trail, and that's probably what they were waiting for. So they might they might jump off, but they don't have to. Okay, and then over here, I would move this track. So each track where I have a guy, I would move. And even you know, let's say I had two little guys up here, put one here. Maybe on a previous turn, he had moved that. So what I would do is I would do a couple things. I would move one for this guy. And then because he's a veteran, and this is why the veterans are so good, you know, the, the white dude here, um, what I would do is I would move an additional two. I'd go one, so I'd kind of push this off. I would take my guy, I'd put him on the track here, but I would still move it even though he's on the track. I would reset this because whenever this is revealed right here, you put it at the back of the track, and then I still need to move one, so I would move one more. So in that way, I moved it three times to the left, three times towards the center of the board. And that's what you do for each track where you have your guys on the last part of your turn. You move two for white and one for each black. And you can even have multiple you know, movements on the same track for each guy that you have there. Okay, the very last thing you do, and you're supposed to do this uh, you know, after you're done with your turn, you do two things. Uh, the first thing that you would do is um, you would go ahead and place your ecosystem you know, like I was talking about earlier, the second thing you would do is if you gained an animal and he's over here in your pen, uh, you'd be able to place any of the animals that you gained that turn immediately uh, at one of these intersections. Okay, so like if he was here, I can place him here or here or here. I can't place him on the edge though, okay? And certain animals give certain amounts of points depending on where they are on the board. This is an in-game scoring. So pink animals like pink habitats, red like red. Uh, you know, the yellow orange ones here like yellow, but they also, they want to be in a line, you know, next to a um, one, of the, one of the pink ones because I guess they eat them. And then the green here, he, 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 he likes the forest, but he also wants to be near the red one in a straight line, okay? Purple likes that. He gets, you know, bonuses for that. This guy doesn't want to be around, um, he doesn't want to be around any one type of habitat. He wants to be around different ones, okay? Um, and then, you know, also every monster, if there's blue out here on the board, because later in the game you're going to get blue, the blue is wild. So any monster, every monster wants to be around it. Also, it's going to double the amount of points that you would get for all of this up here. Uh, just for having one water next to it. Any amount of waters next to it, it doubles it. So that's just a real quick overview of the animals. We've also got the season uh, bonuses that you can get here. So when I place, when I place on a track, you know, you always start here or here or here or here. But if there is a special bonus here, like right here, I would go ahead and I would be able to um, go up the red track. I go down here. And uh, sorry, the game didn't come with all these discs. There's two missing, so I had to use cubes. But right here, I would move up. And so what this means is this bonus right here, I get this many times. This bonus right here for each of these, like this one is how much spirit did I get if I got positive spirit? Because, you know, you can go all the way, you know, from here to here. You can't get negative. But, um, you know, if I get up to eight, this is eight times whatever I get up here. And this one is how many how many of these these cards did I have out here? Up to eight. That's what this is telling you right here. And there's other bonuses over here. Um, this one is for the uh, uh, the Midnight River expansion. That's why it's got that little uh, symbol right there. Um, but that's okay. We won't have to worry. We don't have to worry about that too much. But anyway, just as you place, you know, this is one of the few ways you can get it. You can also get it from the gifts over here, which I'm going to explain in one second. Um, but that's kind of the main way is when you place, when you put your guy down, if there's a symbol there, you're going to be able to get that thing. Now with the Midnight River expansion, there are some other things that you can get, um, you know, just from placing and I'll, we'll get to that in a second. I need to show you a couple things here. Well, first of all, there's eight sages in the game. Okay. There's, there's four on this side, four on this side. Um, and during the game, you're going to be able to give gifts to the sages. And the gifts are these little squares. And when you give your first gift, you put it on the one. If you give another gift to the same sage, you get two. 
You can give a gift to as many sages as you want. There's nine in the game with the Midnight River expansion. I'm sorry, there's one down here as well. He's the sage of, I guess, the river. When you're giving a gift, and the gift the gift symbol is, um, it's a little bag. Um, and one of the ways that you can get it is, um, oh gosh, here. You can give one here. Uh, I know there's another spot here. And this just means give to any, any of the sages on the board. As soon as I go through, um, you know, I go on my trail, I go down the path, I'm going to do each of these things in order. And this is just going to let me put one of my little cubes on a guy that doesn't have it. Or if there's already one, I move it over. And um, so in that way, you're going to be able to get bonuses. So, um, the you know, depending on how many gifts you give, that's how many um, of these abilities that you can use on the sage, you know, when you go down. And, and when do you do this? You do this right here. So if you're going on his path, the blue one, the snake thing here, whenever you hit that, you know, depending on where your cube is, that's how many of these you're gonna be able to do. And if you have the little guy, you're gonna be able to do this, like gain four spirit. This one is recruit um, a young and a veteran. This one is get a creature, if there's a creature available. We haven't gone over that, we're about to. Uh, this one is get the um, the purple biome. So over here, there's the purple. We would raise this by one. So you can do this. Uh, you have to choose a new one. You can't, you know, if you have two, you can't choose the same one twice. Um, but that's what you're going to be able to do. So, you know, when you go down one of these tracks, so say I'm here. I'm going down the water track. I have to pay six spirits. So I move my spirit down here. Say it's here. I move it one, two, three, four, five, six to the left. I get to put a gift down. Let's put a gift on him. I move the, the uh, water biome up, so I'm going to move this up by one. I uh, go over here, I move it up again. I go over here, I move it up again. And this one right here, I think means move my boat. So I would go to my boat down here at the very bottom of the board, because you're playing with the Midnight River expansion, and I would move my boat over one, two, three. And then we go here, I got the gift right here. I would get one of these bonuses, uh, you know, let's recruit a veteran. So I would go over to my board, I would... Uh, Take this guy and I move him down here to where he's available. I can use him now. And then finally, I go to the end of the, end of the trail and I would bring my older back to be available. Um, that's what you would do, you know, when you go down one of these trails. Um, so the way that the game ends, okay, you track the victory points on the outside. And the victory points that I've shown you that you get during the game are mostly from the biomes. Um, there are some other victory points that you could get conceivably. Um, up here at the... Uh, is is kind of the time track for the game you're playing five players it's here four here three here and then two here every time you invite a creature okay the creatures out here are in the wild there's six of them i can't remember all their names but anytime one of these creatures becomes available um you're gonna raise this time track here okay when it gets all the way to here the player who did that takes the last two sons okay and then it's the next player's turn. And when they end their turn, they take away one son. And when they end their next turn, they take away the last son. And that's just to track the end of the game. So that player who started the end of the game is going to get two extra turns. Um, yeah, and every, everyone is really. But they, they finish their turn out. Now, creatures. Um, now, when you're activating, you know, say I'm on this path here. And I'm going down it. And that set sun symbol I was just showing you. That's it right there. So what I would do is every time I see that, I'm going to go and increase this. Okay. I'm also going to take the matching creature. Okay. And if there's no creatures in his column, I'm going to put him at the top of his column. And if there's a bonus in the top of his column, like this one, this one means put a gift on the pink. So right here, I would take my cube and I would put him right here. Okay. I would then take this out of the game. And now this monster, well, creature really, He's available to be um, invited, you know, into your your habitat to go live. Um, you know, he's available now to be used. I, maybe that was the word I should have used earlier. Um, okay, and then on a future turn, now he's available. I haven't gotten him yet. I have to get this symbol right here, this uh, paw print. Okay, so just finishing my move down here, I would go on the trail. I would raise the yellow over here, the biome. Over here, I would... Uh, um, I would be able to get the gifts and then I would go back home. Um, but that would be done. But there's there's monsters or creatures. I'm sorry, I'm going to call them monsters. But there's creatures everywhere. The red's here, green here, purple. And then, um, let's see, where are the other ones? I think there's uh, the frogs here. 
the cat's here, and then this, the other guy, the whatever the bug thing is there. So those are kind of the creatures. They're also on the bottom here as well. Um, but, you know, creatures are mostly on the bottom. You got water over here. This is how you can hire new guys over here, put new guys on the board. Up here you can get spirit creatures. This gives you new cards. Um, so it's very, there's a lot going on on this board. You definitely want to have guys where you can, uh, one of your guys on this track where you can get new guys. Up here, there's the scoring, okay? The scoring up here, this just shows you the different ways you score, and I'll try to go through that in a second. The last thing I want to show you, there are different types of cards. Anytime you get the card here, you can pick any of these cards. These are the lower cards. They only cost three of these symbols, four, five, six. They also give you better bonuses at the top. Okay, so the creature track. So if you're gonna get a creature, so every time you hit this one right here, you got a guy, he's going on the track, you hit this, as long as there's an available creature up there, and let's say there's two reds. Let's just put some reds down here, just to bump that off. Let's say there's two reds. Um, so if I wanna get a creature, I can choose any creature uh, up there on the, uh, on the board. And if I choose this creature in the second row, I go over here, I don't get what's underneath, I go over here, and I get that much spirit. I just raise my spirit and I get the creature and I'm gonna be able to put him in the pen. Oh, there's my spirit, I'm sorry, this is out of order. Okay, and I put my guy in the available, you know, available area. Okay, and so I, I might get another creature here. If I get the guy from the first, first row, I get that much spirit. So just one more, I would raise it. I put him over here. And then at the end of my turn, no matter how many creatures I've hired, whether three or more or one, whatever, I can put that many creatures over here in my area as long as I have an available slot for them. So maybe here and here. If I don't want to place them, maybe I want to get a better spot for the fox guy here. So what I can do is I can take him and I can put him here in this little holding area. And at the end of the game, I get minus three spirit if he stays there. If during the game I get another animal, say I get this one another one of these, okay, and I can place him, um, if, if I can place him on my board, and I can, I got him during the turn, I can place him somewhere on my board, oh, this is not a good example, I can place him here, and if I have, if I have placed one over here, I can also place one, I think that's what that's telling you, that right there, I can take one of these guys that's in my holding pen, and I can play him, but I have to have gotten one, and I have to play him during the turn, in addition, uh, one thing to note about creatures is when I'm placing my creatures, and you can get a lot of points for your creatures. Um, you should probably play them like this. I don't know. I'm doing it up. But you cannot place next to another creature. So this is this is actually not very good here for an example. So maybe I could do something like this. You know, I could place them like that. I could not place them on the edge, though, and I can't place them next to. But you can do it like this diagonal. But you cannot put one here, for instance, because they'd all be... Uh, one apart from each other in that line. Um, so that's kind of how the creatures work. So at the end of the game, you score for creatures in your pen, that's negative points. Where your spirit is on the spirit track. So, you know, maybe we're here and this guy's going to get 10 points, this guy's going to get 5. Um, you're going to score for the season. So however far you got up these tracks, you know, maybe it's like this and that. And then you, you count up how much, how many creatures you have on water, how much spirits you have, how many habitat cards you have. And if you, you know, you have to at least get to the first tier to score any points. And then, you know, you got the board down here. There's a few things that work. Um, so that's how you score for that. And then the very last thing is the animals. You score for every, all six types of animals. Yeah. And there's going to be a few more. If you go down here, there is, uh, some, you some scoring for the special, um, uh, the sprites, and the water thing, I can't think of what he's called, the serpent thing right here, you're gonna be able to score for him at the end of the game. So there's a few extra scorings for the expansion. Um, and that's it, that's all the scoring at the end of the game. It's actually pretty easy to do. Um, now for these Winds of uh, Change cards here, I just picked out two during the games, and they're gonna change. They're gonna, you know, basically there's like 12 of them, and they have a overarching, um, thing that changes the entire game. So like this one is activating the river's guardian does not cost any spirit. And this one is during step four of your, uh, of your turn, move the tracks two spaces for each of your villagers on them, regardless of their type. So that is, this one's game changing. This one, I'll show you how this works in just a moment, but this one just means at the end of your turn, wherever your guys are, you just move to, um, the game, every game of it plays 
differently. You know, these, these tracks are random. It's not always going to be like this. This one has no bonuses. That's not how it's always going to be. This is a special tile that goes here when you play the Midnight River expansion. This is how this normally looks. This is a Sage Overlay tile that we drew randomly when I was setting this up. So every game is going to be very different. You know, if there's one thing I can say about this, it's got a lot of variety. Okay, and the very last thing I want to show is the Midnight River expansion. There's not a whole lot to it. You got your sprites. I got this water snake thing. It's a fish. <laughs> it's a fish. I don't, it this does not look like a fish, but okay, spirit fish. Okay, so um, these are two types of, uh, they're not creatures, I'm sorry. They're, they're not creatures. They don't work exactly the same as creatures. So the biggest thing about them, let me just show you this as an example. Here, as if this is my starting habitat, they don't go in the intersections. They're going to go right on here. Okay, Oop. they're going to go right on here. Or if I have uh, water, he's going to go where I've got water. Okay, and it kind of shows you that right here. Uh, the This sprite right here, he's going to go on a rock. It's very small, but he's going to go on a rock habitat. This guy is the exact opposite. He doesn't like wa uh, rock or water, but he can go on anything else. Um, so that's just something a little different about this. And uh, you're going to be getting them uh, on this special track here. And just like the other tracks, uh, now it doesn't move like the other tracks, but it does have a sage here. Um, and you can still give him gifts, and he's got bonuses. Two of his bonuses are getting the sprites. You know, this is get the dark sprite. This is get the, I think he's the light sprite. Um, anytime you move the boats, um, after the beginning of the game, uh, you're going to move your boat. Okay, you're going to move your boat that many times to the right. After you get to the sixth space right here, okay, and this is just showing you uh, if how many players the game plays up to five players. So this is how each player would place their boat. So if you go last, you go further on this track. But when you get to the sixth space uh, right here, uh, you can choose to, you know, it, just like when I go and activate um, during this phase right here. I'm sorry. When you go and and get to do this, instead of activating one of the guys on, the, on one of the normal tracks, I can instead activate my boat. I can take my boat and I can sail down to the left. I'm always going back to the middle. So normally I would have to pay four. You know, I can just go straight here, be kind of dumb, but I can go here. I can spend four spirit and I can put a gift on the water sage. I'm sorry. No, no, that's not the, that's, that's being able to use the water sage right here. Um, if, if I were to get this one right here or any of these symbols, I can put it on the water stage. This just gives me the ability to use the water stage's symbols over there. I'm sorry, I told you that wrong. Now with the card I just chose, I don't have to pay this for. So that's what this Wild Rapids cards means, it's free. Um, further I get down the river, as you can see, if I go to the eight, I go here, I get to put a gift on any stage. It doesn't have to be this one. And then I can use his abilities for free in this game, or I could pay four and try to use the abilities. Uh, over here, uh, this means I can go to any of these seasons right here. I can put, I can move up on any of these tracks. That's what the uh, four different colors in the circle means. Also, I've got right here, I've got the fish, and that's how I can get the fish right here. And at the end of the game, um, you're just going to score the points over here. And, uh, you know, I think he wants to be next to creatures. That's how he gets his points. And this guy's exact opposite. He doesn't want to be next to creatures. So that's how he works. But he just gives you a flat eight points. So that's that's kind of good. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's some of the new stuff in this set. I haven't gone over every symbol. Just know there's are, there are other symbols in the game. But I hope this gives you some, some idea of how to play this game. So, anyway, hope this helps you out. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.